the B side in boxing. B side shit. B side. B side and the B side. You got a B side. The B side. B side. B side. B side. That B side thing. This is the B sides boxing podcast. Um, okay, Shanada, this one's red meat for you. Have you seen? Oh my god! Do you seen Ryan Garcia's training camp video that was put out? I think like two I days ago, yesterday. Did not. I did not. Uh, last thing I saw was him crying because they were talking about canceling the fight. Like literally crying on an Instagram live or something because they tried to cancel his fight. All right, check this out. This is him. Shadow boxing. That that is not shadow boxing. It is not. That looks like me shadow boxing. And uh, <clears throat> in sitting in the back there, it's Derek James, <laughs> very unhappy with what he's. Oh seen. yeah, yeah, <laughs> like straight up just face palm. Yeah, it's like what the. Fuck I don't know, I man. At? I really Bro, what do the think fuck they are you need, doing? <laughs> they need to cancel this fight, and they need to get Ryan in rehab, rehab or a psych ward or something. I was all ready after <clears throat> last podcast to just keep ragging on him, and then it got actually sad. Yeah, like it—it it has crossed the line between you're a fucking idiot to there's something actually wrong, and somebody should help you. Something se- like seriously wrong, not just you're a, f- yeah. a fuck up, uh, which yeah, is, yeah, we like, can continue to pile it on for that, but. Yes, he is a fuck up, but also making fun of sick people is not my jam. Same. And I do think it has moved into Ryan Garcia has, I don't know, either a mental illness is really showing up or he just OD'd on whatever drugs Oscar has or whatever. He's he's overdoing it and starting to fry his brain a little. Yeah, and I hadn't noticed until, I don't know, one of the YouTube guys that popped up on my feed was talking about how now all of his things on Instagram he has this crazy filter on to hide his whatever's going on with his face it's like a a ladies makeup filter but not the like men's version Yeah, it really softens his whole face and kind of I assume he's getting like bloaty and blotchy and stuff yeah but even when oh. he does those interviews with the random lady who I've never figured out who she is, he always has a filter on. It's weird. So, do you guys think it's like drug related, or is it just like I do? A... Yes. Yeah, you think it's you think it's drugs more than anything. Well, yeah. so yeah, but also Ryan Garcia is the right age for a lot of actual mental illnesses to start really showing up. Like, I'm not saying he's schizophrenic, but if he had the predisposition for schizophrenia, he's the right age and drug abuse setting it off. I could see that as well. This is about the age when Adrian Broner started showing his bipolar disorder. I think like early 20s is when a lot of the the things start showing up. When your brain is like finishing its fully, it's fully developed like age around 25 or whatever it is. Yeah, Duh. yeah. So that makes sense for Ryan. <laughs> Plus, he's and, getting like punched in the head too. Yeah, well, and drug abuse really does it. Yeah, set a lot of that stuff off. Yes, I can attest to that. <laughs> Mike and a hundred percent, Ryan Garcia is getting into all sorts of things. I think. Do you remember the name Mike Alvarado? Mile High Mike Alvarado. I do not. I'll have to send you guys the video, but he was a, uh, I'm going to say like 135, 140 in that area. He was a pretty solid prospect. He was with top rank. Uh, He had a really awesome trilogy with Brandon Rios. Maybe you remember him. I do remember Rios. Yeah. So that was like his chief rival for the longest time. And then Alvarado, you know, he started getting a bit of money. You can take the kid 
out of the hood, but you can't take the hood out of the kid. So he continued to mix around with the shady people that he used to hang out with. And so he he's doing a media workout for some fight. And he does a shadow boxing session. And he looks ridiculous. It's it's at the point where, yeah, the, this isn't funny anymore. This is, There's something wrong with this person. And if you let him get in the ring like this... Like Devin Haney may not be a big puncher, but he's going to land a lot of them, which well, is going to be a problem. <clears throat> who was it that just quit mid-fight against Lennox Lewis? McClell- McClell- <clears throat> All no. over McCall. McCall, oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. I would not be super surprised if we didn't see something like that if nothing changes with Ryan Garcia before the fight. Man, that one with McCall... Oh, he's, uh, that but, was so weird where he just started crying and like yeah, he refusing just, to fight. Yeah, he refused to continue fighting. Uh, Mental breakdown. Yeah, he, he lost his mom between the first Lennox Lewis fight and the second one. And so he and he got on some drugs. I don't know what it was. I think it was crack or heroin. Uh, the really opposite. So I'm not sure how I'm confusing them, but whatever was popular at the time, I guess. And he was, uh, yeah, that's part of why he had a breakdown. He was drug addict, fucking missing mom, which, I mean, come on. that Definitely understandable, but. Yeah, but, it, like, it would not surprise me if, if this fight goes ahead and nothing changes before the fight. If Ryan Garcia just has a complete breakdown in the ring similar to that. If Derek James is as concerned as he appears to be and he tries to advise ryan like we can't this is not a good idea you are not ready for this it's a month away and this is what you're bringing to the table uh and ryan wants to go ahead with it anyway uh more money or whatever and uh, he probably gets thrown out of Derek james's camp well uh Based on his weird ramblings that were very vague during that Instagram thing, it sounds like that conversation has happened and Yikes. started. Because he was literally, like, listening to sad music and doing the, oh, I love you guys, and I'm a little emotional, and I'm just going to, like, probably straight up fucking start crying. They tried to take my fight away from me. They're talking about canceling it. And then... Like, he did the God stuff, and that was the end of the little live. But it does sound like they've already started doing the, dude, you cannot fight like this. I mean, we've, we've known for a while that Ryan <clears throat> had mental problems. He took a yeah. hiatus, like, two, three years ago. What what if, what if, this might sound crazy, what if, like, this is just some really, really fucked up promo for the fight? Like, he just has someone, like, on his Instagram account doing uh... this. It, it. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> but think that so. would be fucking terrible. <clears throat> that is the worst thing I have even thought about. But I was like, what and there's he... people who think that's true, though, Drip. Yeah, because like, what if he's trying to get into like Devin Haney's head? And Devin's like, ah, this would be easy ass fight. So I mean, I, I know it's most likely unlikely. It's it's probably not true, but I. <laughs> Also, we don't know what goes on behind the scenes. Yeah, like, it's boxing, so being really cynical is not, unre- uh, you know, not a bad thing or anything. It's not unreasonable to be cynical about a lot of stuff. And to kind of go, I, I uh, do think it'd be hard to wreck your voice like that, though. Like, have you heard him talk recently? I honestly haven't watched any of his like tant- um, tantrums because I just I don't know. I'm not interested in looking at it because. I yeah, I, yeah. I don't not watch it. We're just seeing a grown man it get the period. Pops up, yeah, it pops up on my Instagram, and I hate click all the time. <laughs> I watched once. It was like five. I was like five minutes in. I was like, "Fuck, I can't. I can't do this." This. I, oh, I, I don't. Can't. I don't usually watch the whole lives. Yeah. I usually find like clips that people have put up, but. I wonder. There's, I mean, there's no way like his 
family, his team, his friends don't know he's like on some kind of like upper or something. Like, it has to be crack, dude. It's gotta be crack. The way like he's just moving and stuff, coke, crack, whatever it is. There's no way no one's like, hey, we should get you help first. The coke seems I mean, like a Oscar's, possibility. Oscar's not gonna do that. I don't think Oscar's coke, probably I, doing coke I, with him. Like, <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't think the coke will make him act like this. I his like, his like, face has gotten really puffy. Like, he doesn't have cheekbones anymore. <laughs> that was one of his most handsome features. It was, though. <laughs> like, it, I know, he's literally was. ruining the best part about him. Yeah, I don't know. I guess there's not much more we can really say other than just we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's speculation, really. Is, is this really well, something? Well, I think it is. Here's like what what's not really speculation though. When all these drugs come up in a drug test, like pre-fight or post-fight. Oh, but yeah. If you have the right chemist, you can. I mean, I know. All right, that's true. I, I mean, I know like the coke will be out in like 24 hours, 48 hours. But, uh, like... Yeah, I was gonna say. I think cocaine's pretty easy to avoid detection if they tell you when they're testing, and I think they usually do. For the most part, there are some random tests thrown in. I'm for... sure De La Hoya's got some people in his pocket saying, "Hey." Not today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. I guess we'll just... Yeah, we'll have to keep watching. Um, whatever it At is... At this point, I honestly hope they just cancel this fight. It would be for the best, I think. I, Ryan really needs help. And I don't think Haney gains anything by beating up a yeah, sick man. I, yeah. I think even he feels bad. He's not even talking shit anymore. Yeah. I, I have noticed that he stopped. Which is a classy move. It is. I approve. Yeah. But if he did want to continue lambasting Ryan, he could put it up. He could frame it as like, this guy is not taking this seriously. He's not well. I'm going to hurt him if you put him in yeah. front of me. Yeah, I think if this fight goes ahead, the only reason it goes ahead is because Haney doesn't have any power. To stop it's, it? It's, oh, yeah. To... No, I mean, like, nobody's worried that he's going to brain damage <laughs> him because he's pillow fisted. Man, he rocked Regis Progre, though. Which is... Yeah, I'm just saying that he has a reputation as not hitting very hard. Um, if, yeah, you're right. Like, they wouldn't put somebody acting like this in front of a tank. Matias, super real Matias. Oh, Jesus, Matias, yeah, yeah. Matias is a scary man. Yeah. Every fight, he every fight has does been uh, not. a mess. He does not what? Yeah. Well, he does not, he's the one who killed a guy in the ring, right? And, like, does not feel bad. He died or after. pretends he doesn't. Yeah, he died afterwards. Okay, but still. Yeah. He does not show any amount of, I don't want that to happen again. Yeah. I I would not fight Matias. Um. All right, let's move on here. This is a really strange situation. Dillian White made his return on Sunday, March yeah. 17th. Oh, he fought? Yeah. What was up with this? Like... Yeah. yeah. Uh, the event was held at the TF Royal Hotel in Castlebar, County Mayo, Ireland. Was it just never announced? It was not announced. The promoter is Platform Sport. It was run by a character named Michael Ofo, uh, who was a protege of uh, Eddie Hearn. This, yeah, there was no media allowed in the event. There were no judges. Every single fight was with the referee decision. And I think the tickets were, or like the event was closed doors. I think it was like invitation only. So you went from title fights to, to that? Yep. <laughs> yep. That's, a, that's where he's at. That's so weird. It's extremely weird. Yikes. That's a big yikes. That's a terrible fall off. Like, did they let people bet on these? <laughs> like, this seems like some sort of gambling scam. Yeah, uh, it's strange. I'm not sure what to make of the whole thing. 
So did uh, he win, Dillian White? Uh, from the bottom up here, before we get to the top, the uh, Dillian White. So Craig O'Brien gets the decision over Remy Scholar. Daniel O'Sullivan, who is the younger brother of Spike the Mustache Guy, he stops Martin mm. Balog in one. Thomas Cardi stops Pavel Sauer in two. Uh, Ray Moilet gets the decision over Requen Kona Facundo RC. Oh, uh, whatever. Yeah, that's a name. So, uh, Sofian Kati gets the decision over Gary O'Sullivan. It's unfortunate to see Spike drop another one. And yeah. Dillian White stops Christian Hammer in three. The German guy? Yes. Oh, uh, I remember him from a while ago. I didn't know he still fought. Right, he hasn't fought in a while. They kind of oh. brought him out, <laughs> dusted him off for this. He had not fought since July 2022. Yeah, I've definitely seen Christian Hammer fight before. Like, he's a name I recognize. He's not very good. He's not very good. What the hell It's is really going on weird here? that Dillian White is on this sort of card. That doesn't seem good for his career. Wasn't Dillian White was right up there with the top guys. Like Then he got bopped by Tyson Fury and then he came back later that year against Jermaine Franklin who had moderate success against AJ he gets the decision there hasn't fought since until March 17th That the Jermaine Franklin fight was 2022 in November end of November this it's, is just, really it's really weird I don't, I don't know what to make of this yeah and like no judges. What the? F what kind of boxing event has no judges? Uh, like the lower level stuff. A lot of times, like four, six rounds, four rounds, like you know. Yeah, but not coming up. Ten rounds. Not a heavyweight contender. Not somebody who's got thirty-two fights. It's really strange. I'm not sure. I, I, my only speculation was that um, Dillian White had something that I think he pissed hot some at some point, and that really like shook his confidence. And this Ofo dude set this up so that he can, you know, get his feet back under him. No pressure, no cameras. Just let's go, champ. I guess as Shannon Briggs would put it. Yeah, uh, Shannon Briggs out there yelling at someone. I don't know. It just it's really strange. I think it it reflects poorly yes. <laughs> on where Dillian White is for sure. Right. Hopefully this is him getting getting himself right and getting back into the mix. Maybe he wants to fight Nganu. That's um and got more of Nganu speed. I'd be a I'd be a good fight. I'd watch that actually. I think there was some um, shady backroom dealings with this. I mean, there has to be if you don't allow media or spectators. Or judges or anything. Yeah. All right. But that's enough about that. I'm going to see. I'm going to keep an eye on this because that I, I really need answers here. All right. This is when you were at Ohashi Promotions. Yeah. Phoenix Battle so, 112. Little Mac in Sunday Puncher Discord set it up. So it was uh, me and him and three Americans who don't really watch boxing. It was a really fun night out. Uh, the boxing was good, as the Japanese boxing always is. And the main event had an Australian, so my program actually has English. So there is one fight that you... Oh no, there it is. The first fight was this uh, Ochaya versus Terasaki. And uh, it was pretty good, but it's just a, a six round. They're both very new. The fight of the night for me was Ryo Osagane versus the Thai fighter King Fudcha. I, I have no idea how you say King his Fudcha. name. King Yeah, that guy got knocked the fuck out. <laughs> um, That's I on Instagram. Yeah, I put up a clip on the LLVX Media Instagram. 
It is the craziest knockout I have ever seen live. Like a one hitter quitter. He just went stiff and fell backwards like a tree. It was crazy. And gone to rest. Yeah, yeah. This Ryu, I saw him at the amateur night uh, that I went to a few months ago. So I think this is only his fifth professional fight. Yeah. Um, And it was great. It was amazing. And then Ryusuke Sunagawa and Narumi Yukawa. That was just a really, really fun fight to watch. A uh, lot of action, very little defense. Uh, unanimous decision to Ryosuke, uh, but just just really fun to watch. They skipped the Aoki fight. I don't know why. It just didn't happen. And then Kosuke Tom- Tomioka and Sho Nogami. I scored it the other way. Uh, it was a mixed decision, I think. Oh. Or was it a split decision? I have no, a split majority decision. draw. Nogami and Tomioka? Oh, I don't have that one. I'm sorry. You do. They're just out of order. Um, split decision. Yes. It was an eight round. Uh, Japanese youth flyweight. So I don't know why it's not just flyweight. They maybe have different weight classes in Japan. Because this one specifically says Japanese flyweight. So that one was also very fun. Uh, the one guy came in in braids. The other guy had Super Saiyan hair. It was awesome. And then the main event was Takeshi Inui and Wade Ryan. And... Uh, They announce everything in Japanese, of course. And I was pretty sure it was a mixed draw, but one of the Americans said that Wade Ryan won. But you have mixed draw. So very anticlimactic. The crowd just went quiet and people got up and started to leave. (laughs) What the fuck just happened? Yeah. There was. So. But yeah, it was a good night. Uh, Takeshi Inui's looking a little old and a little slow and a little sub-world level, but I would definitely go watch him again. Uh, him and Wade Ryan, the Australian, I'd never heard of, but it was a fun fight. Went the, the full 12 rounds. And as always, Korakuen Hall is awesome, and the crowd was good, even on a Monday. It's Japan, so everybody had to come after work and leave before work, so no, no filler. That first round knockout didn't even have 10 minutes before the next round or the next fight. Wow. If you're in Japan, it is a fast night and you will definitely catch the train home. (laughs) Uh, The one that you said, said a Japanese flyweight. It was for a Japanese youth title. Ah, okay. So that's why they had that. Yeah. I, I know I'm a bit not great at the reporting part of it because usually everything is in Japanese. I'm getting a little better though. Yeah, it's all right. Is Takeshi part of the uh, the clan? He fights with Ohashi. Um, so kind of. But I, yeah, I don't know how people are related. Inoue is a very common last name, but the last Inoue that fought must have been a cousin. Because yeah. because they showed up to watch. Uh, Koki. But, yeah. yeah. Takeshi, there was there was no famous in a ways that I could see. But Ohashi was there watching. So. Uh, Alright, let's get the f- fucking other stuff. Oh, uh, this is one, another Australian card that I picked up on. There is... No other reason other than this dude's name. That's on the 23rd. Tonga <laughs> Tongo Tongo versus Tyson Turner. It, t- ton- t- Tonga ton- dude, That's a crazy name. Tonga Tongo Tongo. That is a great name. That's fantastic. I hope he wins. I might just watch it because of his name, honestly. That's really the only reason that I put it on the <laughs> radar. <laughs> this is fantastic. Oh, boy. All right, but on the same day in the UK, as uh, Jose Zapata's back. He's fighting Dalton Smith, who, for the love of me, I cannot 
remember where I've seen him. All right, so from the bottom up, we have uh, Nico Levars versus Piotr Mirga. Those are super bantams. Uh, Conan Murray versus CJ Wood, middleweights. Uh, Emmanuel Budajej versus Bartolome Strychek, super welters. Uh, Giorgio Vicioli versus Sergio Odabai. Odabai? Mm. Lightweights. James Flint, Campbell Hatton, super lightweight. That is. Campbell Hatton is like my least favorite British fighter somehow. Oh, uh, it's the, I think it's like the name that he gets more shine than he definitely deserves. Than he, <laughs> yeah. Sandy Ryan versus Terry Harper. I was yeah. kind of looking forward to that one. Uh, Dalton Smith. I know I've seen you before. I've seen you around. I swear to fuck I have, but I don't know where. Yeah, that name. Sound, I feel like we watched him fight. That exactly. Earlier, but I can't think of who he's fought. I am just sad that. Jose Zapeda is sticking around longer than he should. Yes. I love Jose Zapeda, but I was really hoping he'd retire after the last one. Yeah, this is WBC Silver. So if Zapeda were to win, he could he would technically be in line for the uh winner of Haney Ryan Garcia. Uh-huh. I wonder who that winner is going to be. No. Oh. <laughs> They have brought Zapeda in to lose. Like, yeah. that is the plan. Yeah, for sure. But I hope he doesn't. Yeah, same. It'll always be funny for me when the UK guys bring up, bring in somebody who they think is just going to be a pushover. I mean, I'm going to cheer for him. Yeah, <laughs> like, absolutely. But. Um, I'm not sure what to make of this Dalton Smith guy, but I'm expecting they brought uh, Zapata in for name recognition I think I, can be a I bit of a I've challenge. I think I've seen Dalton Smith before, looking at his face. Yeah. And I... Yeah. My favorite Jose Zapata moment will always be when he knocked out Josue... What's Josue's last name? Vargas. Yes. First round. Vargas talked so much shit. And Zapata walked in and just KO'd him, like, a minute into the fight. It was amazing. I loved it. Yeah, he hasn't fought since twenty since June of 2022. Which was the Zapata fight, wasn't it? No, the Zapata fight was two oh. fights before, in October okay. of 21. Uh, I think Zapata might have broken his entire confidence, everything. His shtick. The prodigy? Yeah. Not a prodigy anymore. Nope. Not after running into Zapata. <laughs> but yeah, I hope I hope Zapata does that to Smith. Although then that means he's gonna take another fight, but yes, and it's gonna be against somebody much better. Yeah. Than Dalton Smith. I kind of feel like Zapata is right about where Gabe Rosado, Gabriel Rosado was when he beat Beck the Bully. Oh, yeah. And then Yeah, that's a good like, that's a good analogy. Yeah. I think I think their careers are kind of in a similar spot and I wanted Gabe to walk away a winner and that is what Jose should do if he beats Dalton Smith. If he beats Dalton Smith, and we're assuming Devin Haney's going to beat Ryan Garcia. Like, Devin Haney's not a very dangerous challenge to take. That's true. That's true. I hadn't really put that together, but you're right. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see if uh, Ryan, if this is just art of war type of stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's like Zapata. He's 10 years older than Devin Haney, though. So he has more he's, mileage. He's past it. But love him to death. He's uh, getting up there. It's unfortunate. No, but he'd get exciting... a decent payday out of it. Yes. That is, yeah, that would be good. Um, well, sorry, Dalton. Nobody cares about you. <laughs> Nobody knows who you are. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode of the Boxing B-Sides. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, did something we say fucking ruffle your feathers, 
833 Lux Pods. Uh, if you if you want to leave a voicemail, I can cut in your audio if you're not a douchebag. Um, or if you want to text, either way, it's anonymous. Um, LVX Media Net is where all the that's the socials, everything. If you can't find it, we're not on it. LVXmedia.net is the website if you want to check out some of the other shows we get up to. If you're into MMA, we got something for you there. Uh, politics, if you're a fucking nerd like me. Um, if you go to LVXmedia.net slash shop, uh, we do have some original merch. Uh, I think it's pretty good, but then again, I made it. So, <laughs> of course, I think it's good. Either way, uh, if you have a second, if you could hit us with a rating. If you're not feeling five, uh, five stars just not in the cards right now. You've got, I just gave you my number. Like, that's reaches me directly. Uh, let me know why it's not a five. Um, why you're not feeling a five. I would like the opportunity to, you know, fix whatever you have that whatever is like bothering you about it. That's uh, keeping you from a five. And I would like to, you know, earn the remainder. So there you go. That's going to do it. Uh, we'll be back next week. Um, there will be some a little bit more reviews and we will have the previews for Oscar Valdez his card on Friday and then the uh, fucking shit show that Keith Thurman caused. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be a shit show. I think it's going to be better, but uh, we'll have more. We'll have more chatter on that as it gets closer. So we'll see you then. <laughs>